have a bit of a disclaimer for myself um, and for this testimony. Um, first of all, I am spiritually protected from anybody who's wishing me any downfall, negativity, or harm during the stream or any time after this. Um, please do not send any hate threats to anybody mentioned during this live testimony um, or anyone still associated with the community. Um, this is not what this is for. Um, I'm going to try my best to leave as many names out as I can for safety reasons, um, but uh, some online aliases will be left in the story for clarity, um, and I apologize to anyone who's listening um, if they are included. Um, this live testimony is simply meant to document my own truth and survivor story and give some insight on the situation um, as I was involved. Um, I was invited into this Discord server, um, and I am not associated with unmasking Swanson, um, just to put that out there. Um, it's, uh, this is also to shed some light um, on the truth of someone that we all know um, and the research that I've done during this time and soon after I left the community about the topics I'll be discussing. Um, there is, this is not harassment, this is not slander, this is not bullying, and I'm not claiming any false information. This is my truth, and I'm gonna fucking tell it, and I waited very long for this day to do it. My name is Creepchild, um, I am also known as Meg, um, I currently work as a creative director and producer in photography, um, I work online, I work for myself, I am also a proud sex worker, um, because that's one of the things I think, um, Nor goes for, and I will not be using his name. Um, but question number one, how did you become first aware of Nor and, uh, the community? Um, so yeah, so I watched, um, a couple of the kink videos that he put out and I was intrigued by everything and in one of the kink videos um, he had asked uh, for people who had ever received um, unsolicited dick pics to email um, his assistant uh, who was Flower at the time. With all this time and a broken ankle I was like hey I'm gonna sit around. Um, so uh, I emailed her and actually got a response back and was told to send in um, a written story about me and um, my like knowledge of unsolicited dick pics, which is what I did. Um, looking back at it now, I realized that he had information on me before he even met me, slash before I knew he had met me, which kind of trips me out. Put on a, out on September 17th, so now we know like when kind of I was in contact. So like September 17th, I was in this live chat. I think I commented a couple times in the live chat. Soon after I started following his Instagram, he posted in his story that he was asking for sex workers to interview um, for one of his kink videos. Email, I instantly DM'd him, um, and he instantly responded back to me, um, and we went to set up um, an interview for me to talk about my experiences as a sex worker. Um, I really, watching, I like watched his videos every single day, I thought this guy was like the best guy ever. Um, he was exposing all these dark secrets. Uh, he was like exposing all these things that I was like, I was see like doing my research on separately um, and being myself uh, a survivor of other abuses, like before any of this. Um, I was really in, like, I was seriously just like happy that there was a place that people could go and actually get some help. And yeah, I was alone sitting in my basement apartment, seriously depressed with a broken ankle. So this place was, a uh, good place for me to kind of just go and be, which was nice help. When did you first get involved and when did you start to see something was off with him? He brought me into the Discord server to do the interview with him and I'd never been on Discord before, so I didn't really know how to figure it out, but we did a lot, like we did an interview together. We talked on live chat for about three or four hours, just getting to know each other, him asking me about why I was interested in the channel, um, and after opening up to him about a few things, obviously we started talking. Um, we did the interview, which you all maybe have seen. I'm not sure if it's still up. Actually, I should have looked to see if it was still up. Um, for a video he was going to put out. And that video actually was supposed to go out in September 2019. And he put it out way after that, like I think in January. So that should just tell you uh, where my information went. It obviously was not being used for what it should have been used for. Um, but while we were talking about that, uh, obviously as a creative director, um, I was super interested uh, in helping him do some other projects. 
being kind of creative. Um, and we had just kind of talked about that in passing because uh, I was telling him about some other projects I was working on at the time personally. And we decided that um, I was going to create this like torture red room footage. Um, basically, I was going to create like a one for one red room experience from start to finish, including my death. Um, of me just being tortured um, in different ways and we were going to take that footage and use it as like a social experiment um, to uh, like we were going to make it kind of like a secret if no like nobody knew it was real uh, kind of deal and I was really excited about it um, I was excited to have to work with the channel I was excited that it would possibly be a part of a series um, as just like someone who loves horror and someone who just loves creating and someone who loves acting, I was like, this is fucking sick. Um, I went all out. I have hours and hours and hours of behind the scenes footage of me collecting all the props, all the production. All right, crew, we're taking the Surviving Life channel on the road. I am here in my local dollar store to buy a few things to torture and kill myself with me setting everything up, me putting a team together, me doing everything. He did not finance any of it. Um, I financed all of it. Uh, and I, he told me to keep receipts, but like, obviously that never came to fruition. Um, and yeah, I created this entire Red Room experience. Um, I also took it as like a healing moment um, because I really, uh, yeah, I know, he said it was a movie. And, and this is what I knew when I started talking about this, everyone's gonna be like, wow. Um, but yeah, uh, I knew nothing about a movie. It was never going to be a movie. I don't know nothing about a movie. Um, to be completely honest with you, I found out after I left the community that it was actually given to somebody as a gift. Um, and, uh, like, a, as a sorry, I'm not paying enough attention to you gift. Um, and then I later found out that I myself was kind of a gift, uh, for somebody to play with. So it, yeah. Thinking about that footage kind of bothers me. Um, he still obviously to this day uses it. Uh, that's why even today he was messaging me about it. Um, I just, yeah. Um, I will use it eventually for myself. Uh, I took a lot of, out of it. I lost my voice for two weeks uh, completely for it. Uh, ah! oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, so I couldn't work any other job. Um, I didn't get compensated for it. I was physically put in trauma. Um, I've been raped before in similar ways to things that I acted out in hoping that it would do some type of healing and at the time that it did and now that I look back it is kind of fucked. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah, so that was at the end of September. Um, and yeah, so at the end of December, I started finished, I started to send him a uh, finished Red Room project stuff and he started to see it. Um, and he was super excited about it. And that's when he wanted me to get closer in to the community. Um, so he asked me to, uh, he asked me before he would give me any more responsibilities and like the team or anything like that, uh, to just like introduce myself into the community. Um, which is a little bit of an isolation tactic looking back at it but um but yeah so i spent a lot of my time in the community and in the chats and that's where i met all of you guys and i don't regret any of that because that's one of my favorite fucking things um that's ever happened to me because of this yeah, as i was um in the community um i quickly kind of like moved up the ranks um, in places in terms of like staff and modding um, so that's when all of a sudden everyone started seeing me uh, like modding on the live streams like really intensely and like um, me uh, participating in lives and stuff it's because him and I had already been talking for about like a month and a half like exclusively almost every day but I was moving up quickly in the ranks and I was really excited because I was helping a lot of people um, at the time, like I said, I was hearing a lot of everyone's stories, um, and it made me feel good to be in a place that I could help, especially because I was in such a dark place, and I'm not usually a dark person, so, um, it was, it was, it was nice, it was nice to get to know everyone, and I felt super comfortable, um, and he used that definitely to his advantage. Um, I know also moving me up in, like, ranks of staff, 
was a way to get others in staff to either not like me or talk shit about me or just wonder my role. Um, and I don't blame them at all for that because from my understanding, he hid a lot from everybody and he kind of did it on purpose uh, to keep all of us from being friends with each other. Um, because honestly, me being friends with someone in this, like someone really high up in staff actually is what brought me to some conclusions later on. Um, so he knew what he was doing by keeping everyone separate and not talking to each other. Um, there was many cases where he told me I wasn't allowed to talk to people. Um, many, many, many. Yeah. Um, anywho, uh, when did you start to see something was off with him? Um, okay, so yeah, so as we were talking um, all throughout September, um, he kept telling me how like special I was, um, and we had a lot of talk about spirituality um, and magic and just like being connected, so there's that. Um, he would start to talk a little bit about how he never, he didn't have this connection with anybody else, um, how there was only a couple of other people in his life that he had that connection with and it was just so ironic that we all happened to be into the same things and he was just starting to allude to this like to this idea that there was like a sisterhood of some type um or some like just some type of like connection between people that we didn't really know um and uh and yeah and so i was like at the time um he knew how much I was into spirituality. So he knew to me how much of like a universal sign that was. Um, and so he used that definitely to pull me in. Um, uh, that's when he introduced the cult to me. So I actually have stuff written down of, from the first conversation that we had of him, the way he introduced it to me. Um, I know it's going to sound very similar to some people because I showed it to some other survivors as well in the past and they were kind of shook um, at how similar it was. Um, so this conversation happened on September 29th, 2019. Um, and uh, this is the day that he introduced um, anything sexual to me. So like we were kind of flirty beforehand a little bit, but like not really. He kind of knew that I was in to the industry at that point. He knew my entire life. Um, and yeah, at this point, he kept telling me that we had a connection, a spiritual connection, that this was more, that he's never felt this way about anybody else. Um, and I have screenshots for all of that, too. Um, everything I'm talking about, I have screenshots for, by the way, everything. Everything I'm talking about is all come from screenshots. Um, so yeah, September 29th, 2019. Uh, I feel like you see me for me. This is, these are all things that he told me. Um, I feel like you see me for me. Uh, thank you for letting me in, Meg. Uh, what I have to offer you is something that could last forever. Um, okay, so think about what you want and you will find out all about what I want tomorrow. But I will say my dom name is Dominus and Dominus craves flesh, little creep. So you imagine um, how you can convince your Dominus your flesh is worth it. Really fucking apologize. It's actually making me angry to read it, to be honest. Like, actually. So, yeah. Um, so I started to see things changing then. Um, and that's when, um, I started getting stuff for, uh, the house contract. Um, part of my situation was he called me every morning at 10 AM every day. Um, I would tell him what my day was, what I had, what I was doing for the day. Um, and then, uh, we would talk, we would do stuff for the channel. Um, I would have a middle of the part of the day where I would do some work and then I would be on a live stream at night or in the community the rest of the night and basically and, and, play, and basically just like I was just always always in the realm always in the realm of Nor um, at every point. Uh, he controlled every aspect of my life um, including basically when I went out, um, what I did, who I spoke to in the community um, and everything. Yeah. Um, the sex cult info, I have the exact data when he sent me the file. Um, I was the first person to get the doc, the, that document. Um, a lot of the tasks in the document were tasks that he had already written out for me. Um, I'm not sure if he had sent 
it to the other women at that time, but at that time there were two other women also involved, um, but they didn't receive the document until afterwards. Uh, their grooming process was already in motion, though, for a while. I will say that. Um, so I'm not really sure what, like, I'm not really sure whether or not he had this particular plan, but, um, I think it just happened that he, he manipulated three people at the perfect moment, um, to put this together, to be honest. Um, I didn't help him make it at all. I see your little questions on the side. Um, I didn't help him make it. Um, he asked me to look over it and edit it and see if there was anything that I wanted to take out or do anything about. Um, but that document soon came offline not too long after. I didn't know why. I was lucky I had already screenshots of it. And at that time, I was already creating my own um, notes folder because one of our tasks was to have like a separate notes folder with all of our like tasks and our answers and stuff in it. Um, so I had already created something separate like that. But um, at some point, it went offline. And I found out it was because um, another member who he was trying to get to sign the contract basically told him, no, this is a sex cult, um, and he freaked out, and yeah, so he took that away quite quickly. I was hoping to God that he was not going to, um, I, I, like, hoped he wasn't going to send it to anyone else, but then I, when I, when I got onto the server, when I was invited to the server, uh, and I saw the, like, second cop, like, second version, I actually started crying, um, because that was my worry, was that, like, he was going to keep going. Um, and, um, and yeah, so that startled me a bit, um, and I'm sorry that I couldn't stop it, uh, when it was happening. I have a lot of guilt about this, um, I know it's normal and I know that I shouldn't, but, like, a lot of the reason why I was so, like, scared to leave and why I stuck around for so long was because... I, there's so many people in, like involved, and I could see him starting to groom other people. Where are we going? Okay, the grooming process. So at this point, I'm gonna since we're on this topic, um, a lot of people ask like, how can you groom adults? Like that's impossible, or like you can't groom adults. Like they give consent. Um, yeah. Just leave it at that. Um, I'm going to read off some excerpts from The Psychology of Adult Sexual Grooming uh, by Grant Simone uh, from Bond University, 2017. So this is a recent article, or this is a recent, um, sorry, journal. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to give out some information on sexual grooming. Um, I think it's really important that I give out this information. I feel like when I give out this information, a lot of it is going to ring true to some of the experiences you guys have had, because not only can this be um, sexual grooming, a lot of these things are just like general grooming as well, um, which I think he's doing to everybody. Um, so sexual grooming is the process of deliberately establishing a connection in order to prepare a person for sexual exploitation or abuse. Any situation in which an adult is primed to permit themselves um, to be abused and or exploited for sexual gratification of another is sexual adult grooming. Um, recognizable themes in the grooming profile process. Um, the predator always profiles. They establish trust. It's a slow, gradual change in behavior. Um, they create a, a psychological, social, emotional, and often physical reinforcing experience as an integral part of the process to prepare the victim, um, to basically prepare the victim for the exploitation. Um, early stages of grooming offer the victim high stages of reward uh, at the hands of the predator. Uh, so exactly like the abuse cycle, yeah, it's very similar. The abuse um, itself is often initially experienced but the victim, uh, by the victim as a positive experience and followed by confusion, guilt, fear, and or threats. And that usually is what stops people um, from coming out about everything because it starts off as a positive experience to them. And then when they find out that this is all just a sham, um, they feel really guilty and confused um, and they're usually threatened um, and they're scared and they say nothing. Um, so yeah. 
and yeah, I was going to say, I'm going to post, I'll post a, a link to this article too, so that everyone can read it. Um, but only approximately four out of 8% of adults who are abused or exposed or exploited, sorry, as a result of sexual grooming behaviors actually come forward. So four to 8% of people who are groomed, who, adults who are groomed actually come forward, which is fucking insane. That's no, that's nothing. I like, it, it makes me want to, it like breaks my heart. Yeah. Like it breaks my fucking heart because that's how often it's happening and no one's talking about it. Um, and so that's why I came here today because we're gonna, we're, we're talking about it, ladies and gents. Yeah. So speak, so grooming. So like talking about that, we'll just jump to this question. Um, what kind of woman is he looking for? Uh, if this might be a little bit triggering, I'm going to just say it as factual as humanly possible for my knowledge. Um, there are many women associated with this cult. Uh, it is not just the first three. It is not just who I, I like, I'm not sure how many people came after me. I only know of people that were there with me and people who were a part of things before me um, and things were happening before me um, that I was unaware of until um, I was until I was already like into the community uh, yeah uh, and then my thing happened yeah but anyways what kind of woman is he looking for um, a predator looks for um, survivors of, of like abuse, neglect of any, like any kind of trauma. Um, and this is particularly for Noor. Um, and then I'll go into what like groomers might go into, but like for Noor women that he goes for survivors of abuse, neglect of trauma of any kind, um, sex workers or women who participate in consenting adult activities in their professional or personal lives. And he does this on purpose so that, um, it's, it's all a part of that same like grooming tactic. It's easier to get closer to you in that sense. Um, it's also easier to shame you when you leave. Um, he does the same thing with the mental health. Um, in my opinion, people with extreme trauma issues, um, and this includes myself, uh, individuals who have seen, who seek approval or validation uh, from powerful or, author or authoritative male figures and not necessarily on purpose, just something that happens. Um, uh, he looks for those women particularly, um, women who feel neglected or lonely in their, in their home life or marriage, um, or who need an escape from reality, uh, probably so that he can blackmail them. Um, but also to kind of like keep them around, uh, kind of keep it like a separate, like a completely separate reality for them. So they could, so like, even when things happen, he kind of can keep it, um, in his circle. Um, women with children, um, who are empathetic to his unfortunate child situations. Um, I'm pretty sure he uses this to draw them back in. Um, I also assume he uses this to draw in community members. Um, and yeah. Okay. I see a few of your questions. He didn't threaten me when I left because I never really left on a big moment, but he did threaten me when I tried to expose him the first time. Um, and he has plans for not just women as well. He also was like, he also like, um, brainwashed and manipulated men too. I already had the, uh, the cult manifest. He was already talking to me all the time. Um, I was doing, uh, I was slowly doing the tasks that he was providing for me. So like, I have all of those tasks written down. Um, also as someone who's a creative, I have a lot of video evidence of things that I did. I have a lot of photo evidence of marks of hand signs of me going out, um, trying to like take photos of like women that like with women that he liked, um, because that was one of our tasks that we had to do. Like every time a new survivor would come into the community, he'd like put a couple of team members on them to like make sure they were safe. He was getting all of the team to like message anyone that they could to try to get them um, to try to get them on the live streams. Cause that's also when he started to really do live streams. Um, uh, that's when I contacted Loie Lane. I commented, my queen Loie commented her, uh, I commented in one of her, her McKinney Manor video, her first one, um, in, on behalf of the community. And yeah, she messed, I, I sent him, um, I sent him a link about it and I said, Hey, I wrote like something in her comment. Um, and he actually sent me back, ew, no thanks, not this one. 
uh, she's something, and I have a screenshot for that, and I was kind of, it kind of shook me, um, because soon after that, he was all over her, like, fucking glue, um, when at first, he didn't even want to have anything to do with her, um, and, uh, and then, yeah, she was obviously sweet enough to message me back, because she's amazing, um, and I was really excited about it, uh, she ended up coming on a live stream, um, from my understanding, he had a couple of us staff members talking to her, um, I'm not sure if that there was a reason for that. Um, I didn't know about that until a little bit after. Um, but there's a few of us kind that he like kind of gave us instruct like a few of us instructions to like continue to message her. Um, so that was a little bit surprising for me. Um, and uh, and at one point before I left for my vacation because I went to Jamaica at the end of November. Right before I went to, uh, right before I went on vacation, I kind of asked him, I was like, listen, like, what are you doing with, with this manor stuff? Because, you know, it's getting a lot. All of us are on here 24 seven. Um, at the time that stuff was happening, the team was also doing other things behind the scenes. I'm not really sure how the team works now, but at the time that I was working on the team, we were doing a lot of work, like a lot of work. I basically spent my entire day doing work for, for the community and for Nor, like literally my entire day. All night I would be undercover in places that I probably shouldn't have. Um, and he gave no fucks about our safety in terms of that. Um, I was up all night sometimes with survivors, just us doing it because we loved each other and we loved everybody and we were just doing it because we all literally our survivors in our own rights and we just want to help people with all the other like stuff happening in the background that's all that really mattered to me um and we were getting super busy and uh he wasn't really had it he didn't really have any direction with where he was going a couple of the team members miraculous or like surprisingly kind of just disappeared and i wasn't really sure where they went but like a couple like those people i wasn't allowed really to talk to so it wasn't anything i could ask questions about um and uh and yeah, I went on vacation. I came back from vacation and um, that's when everything started happening um, in terms of like the first time I, or like when I realized I was in a sex cult and when I realized that I had been participating in one consistently, that I had signed a contract to something that I had no idea what the fuck it was um, and that everything in my whole entire life at that point was a complete and utter lie. Um, I also have video of me writing that same symbol on the back of... Uh, Huh, on the back of the, the um, what's it called it, the painting in the hotel room. I also wrote it on the corner of the shower. My brother at the time was in the room with me and he was like, what the fuck are you doing? Um, <laughs> and I was like, oh, I like, I, I don't know. I kind of just like blabbered to him. And like every time I told someone about the stuff I was doing with Nor, I kind of always kept it secret. And I was kind of like, I kind of told them some things, but like the second I started talking about it, I could see the look on their face that like, they didn't think it was right and they were just kind of confused as to why I was doing this so like easily just by like the things I was doing um and it really confused a lot of the people closest to me I lost a lot of friends because I was never around um my roommate started noticing the patterns of grooming and weird activity way before I did um she started noticing it like right after I got the the um the contract because I like showed it to her and she's like this is kind of fucked like like I don't like I don't know why like she's like I've never she's like I've never done anything like this and I was like oh well whatever it's just you know like it's a thing like there's other people doing it and like it's like it's a magical thing like you wouldn't understand and like I said he kept going with this like spiritual thing that really like pushed my button that like this must be something like super special um but uh but yeah the anyways Sorry, I kind of got off track there. I got back from Jamaica. I got a message from the person, I, from this person I wasn't allowed to talk to, who was a part of the cult. Um, we will call her the East. And um, she had left, and she messaged me saying that she was sorry and that she didn't leave because of me. And I was really confused because I was like, "What are you talking about?" Like. I thought you left because we were in, um, actually we mention it all the time in the server, um, the team was working in, in a suicide grooming um, server undercover and it was really unsafe and uh, he, uh, Nora mentioned it in a live stream which made it even more unsafe 
Um, and yeah, a couple of the team members pulled out because of that. Razor blades and cut the names of the members into their bodies, take pictures, and post them on the Discord. Uh, they then try and encourage the children to live stream their suicides. And uh, that's what we've been dealing with. They're actually, we talk about it, like I said, quite often in, um, in the server, but, um, but yeah, uh, I thought, I thought she left because of that. Um, and then I was informed by her that no, she left, well, she left because of that reason, but there were other reasons as well. And, um, honestly, it was her bravery that day coming to talk to me that made me want to say my story today. So if she's listening in here, I love you. Um, but, um. She told me uh, everything that was happening with her and Noor, um, that uh, we were purposely not allowed to speak with each other, um, that uh, she had put up a fight about sex cult and was basically threatened and um, abused because of it, and uh, she couldn't take it anymore and she left. Um, and she wanted to tell me her story because um, she, uh, she wanted she wanted me to leave too, and I, I, when someone comes to you and they tell you their story, and obviously I won't give her story, that's hers to tell, um, it just makes you, it just makes you start to see what's really going on around you, and I started doing my own research, I started reading more on, um, on everything that we were talking about, on sex cults, on grooming, on exploitation, and I was just in shock at how my life had turned into this game for a narcissist. I was kind of taken aback and then I could finally see all the different stages. So like, um, I guess I'll put that in right now since I forgot. There are seven stages of adult grooming or sexual adult grooming. Um, there's victim selection, uh, research, uh, then creating a personal connection and then meeting needs, um, and then uh, priming the target and then um, in, and then putting in the sexual contact and then controlling the victim. Um, and after uh, the predator can either move on to a new victim or they can keep going on to early stages to regain trust. And right now he's going back to early stages to try to regain my trust. Um, and that's why I decided to tell my story um, before you could basically get to me. Uh, so yeah, so I came back and I found out all, all that information and I've been kind of shook because while I was in Jamaica, um, he actually, uh, that's when things got to the most escalated in the grooming process. Um, uh, so yeah, at that point, he was trying to get me to move there with them, that I should move there with them because I was having issues with money and I was having issues um, with my house. And around that time was actually um, when Chef helped me out financially to keep me in my house because I was um, up for eviction a few times. And so him knowing my situation and him knowing that I really had nothing here and I was like on the verge of moving, et cetera, um, he started mentioning things like, I hope this isn't stalkery, but like, I can't wait until you get here and like, you should just move here with us and it would be amazing. And don't worry how we'd explain it to the community. We could just explain it however we wanted to. Um, and that's when it started to really concern me. And first, I didn't think I was in a sex cult. And then all of a sudden, I'm fully in this like brainwashed, manipulated state. And then all of a sudden, this person's trying to make me move there. And I was seriously considering it. And then I get this information, this like light savior information that, um, that I was in this process, this in this grooming process. Um, and I, that was kind of my last straw. I kind of freaked out. I was like, oh my God, if he's doing this to me, he's doing this to other people. I then later found out um, in the same little bit of time through my like research, I was still in the community, but I was very quiet about what I knew and I was just trying to figure out what I was gonna do. Um, I found out that he actually had um, sexual misconduct with people beforehand from the community before I got in there. Uh, this was not the first time this stuff had been happening. Um, the symbol that he was getting me to wear was a symbol of his that he had put on hundreds of women um, throughout his life. Uh, 
he uh, he had told me about his like sex addiction and like all of the like sexual things he used to do I know he used to have like an orgy room in one of his older houses when he was younger um he was very much into the king scene and like that's fine you can do that um but uh it just made me wonder how many more women fell prey to things like this um and it started to it started to scare me that even after I left, things would still be going on. I contacted someone I was, I knew really well, and I spoke to her for a bit and uh, explained to her everything. And she was kind of my fail safe, just in case anything happened, um, because she wasn't in the community, but she was someone that I saw that Nora was starting to groom slowly. And uh, with 2.2 million followers, I could not have that happening to somebody, so. I let her know everything. Um, I let her know all the stuff about the sex cult. I sent her all the documents. I sent her everything that I had. Um, and I said, I need someone to know what's going on. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do yet, so please don't tell anybody else. But, like, I just need someone outside of here to know. Um, she, of course, because I didn't know this, was in contact with somebody else in the community. Um, and, uh... And she was worried about their safety, and that person was actually a man, um, because Nora not only targets women, he also targets men. Um, he manipulates them in similar ways. Um, he probably promises them things that are not proper. Um, at the time, I thought that he had gone to Iran, and I was pretty upset. But uh, at that time, like I said... <laughs> Nobody knew that what was going on. Everyone was kept in the dark about certain things on purpose. Um, I don't blame anyone for anything. I like literally, I don't blame anyone for anything that happened then. Um, I was upset about it a little bit when I entered this server. If you go back to my comments, you might see some angry things. Um, but thankfully, through my own self reflection, um, I just realized we're all we're all survivors of this person um, in different ways and. Uh, it was bad for me and it was unsafe for me at the time but like I don't blame anybody and like I I completely forgive anyone for any actions they did during that time um because nobody knew what was going on um so yeah so he told he told Nor and Nor started freaking out um I have screenshots he called me a million times I was out with my dad that day and he was like you need to call me right now I'm going to expose everything I need to know what happened between you and this person um me and this person had been seeing each other in real life he was the only person from the community that i was that i had met in person um and he was the only person i trusted because he had told me a couple of things about what was happening in the community before i got there um and nor was not happy that i was lying to him that i was hiding things from him that i would tell him anything about um what him and i were doing um and that was right around the time that was right after the wolf star incident so he was kind of on like a high that was like november november 29th was the wolf star video and then all of this stuff kind of happened a little bit after that in that week um and yeah that was the reason why he put out the kinks how not to start a sex cult video on december 9th it's now take a fucking message can you not think for yourself? You can see the dominant aggressive side now really coming to the to the surface. If the grooming earlier wasn't clear, stays with you. This guy, the coyote is, all of it is just so out of this world that if 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 you're new to this whole kink series and, and communities like that. This is going to blow your mind. So for me, as part of the King series, looking into individuals like this who showcase signs that are, 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 are typically what are renowned as the major dark signs of the King communities, how vulnerable people can fall prey, where fantasy and reality, when it's met with a lifestyle of no boundaries, can create a dangerous situation where the fantasy and the reality of life merge. And these individuals start living in a gray area where the fantasy of their online creations becomes a reality in their mind. But then, when the individuals are a part of that online fantasy come into the reality, things don't add up. On December 9th, how to start a sex cult video was because he thought that I was going to be exposing him about starting a sex cult um, with said person that I had spoke to. Um, and he was terrified. Six times I've got open the door. 
I was I went down a rabbit hole for this uh, how to start a sex cult video that I'm almost finished part one of. It turned out really good though. I feel like I'm a little bit harsh on one of the women in it though. How harsh is half? Well. So he started to to basically like say he was gonna. Um, he was going to mine people's computers. He was going to hack into everything. He was going to take all of our stuff. He was basically trying to get me to say as much stuff, like scare me into saying as much stuff as possible um, about my relationship with this person. Um, and he basically turned this person into a scapegoat for his own uh, misinformation. Sorry, for his own uh, misdoings. Yeah, it's not a cult, exactly. Um, that was because it was a cult. Um, and uh he was trying his best to make it look like it, he was not um and actually if you watch that video on december 9th i watched it today and i had a good laugh uh pay close attention to his beady eyes because um during this entire time that i've been speaking about him he was very high on cocaine almost every single night almost every single day all every single um Every single uh, live for McKinney Manor, guess who was having a grand old time? Mr. Noor. Uh, by the way, I'll just put that out there. Uh, he has no capability of hacking anybody. Um, every single one of his threats are completely empty. Uh, he cannot find any of your stuff. All of January, I basically sat in a shiver. I cried on the phone with Chef at one point. I know he spoke about that in his, uh, in his testimony. Um, cause I thought that he was hacking into my computer. I thought he was hacking into my phone. I thought he had taps on everything. I, he has my address. He has my name. I thought he was going to come to my house. It was ridiculous. I was fucking freaked the fuck out. Um, so at that point he started to isolate me from the community, push me out. I was no longer involved in team meetings. I was no longer allowed to go on live streams. Um, I was blocked from VC, so I couldn't speak out loud. Um, I'm not sure, but I felt like I was being watched by the team, um, and, uh, and was being told, like, being told to be, to be watched, um, and it was a really scary time. My whole life was based around this community, and, like, my ankle was slowly getting better, but those months that I was here, I basically just put my whole life into the community so to be completely iced out was like was depressing and like I remember I had a lot of suicide ideation at that moment chef I love you don't worry about that from the other day by the way um I have CPTSD so it's something I go through often and a lot of my symptoms are completely flared up um it got really bad and it was all during Christmas and New Year um and it was a really rough time. In and around January is when he started coming back. It's when he started putting out the videos being like, oh, like I just was off on mental health. Um, he says that a lot, by the way, that he's off on mental health. Uh, when he's off on mental health, it's because he's too high um, and he is basically, he's sick from his highness. Um, doing cocaine all the time really takes a toll on the body. So when he says he has like a really bad cold or flu, he might, but he didn't just catch that. It's because he's been killing his immune system. Um, so between consenting adults in these situations, consent is coerced and therefore there's no consent period. I'll say that again. In these situations, consent, consent is coerced and therefore there's no fucking consent. Adult grooming is real. Um, he abused his power with survivors um, to take advantage of them um, for his own gain. Um, this instantly makes any type of idea of consent not like not involved. He's coerced. He's coerced people into into these into these situations, um, specifically through through brainwash. Um, honest to God, the entire community. Um, is basically being groomed by him in some type of way. So, yeah. Um, and like I said, uh, he goes particularly for people um, in the, like, mostly in the community, or at least from my experience, 
in um, sex working communities or in kink communities so that um, it doesn't, so that he could use this consent thing. Um, but when you're coercing people and manipulating them, um, in my opinion, that's not consent. So that's what I have to say about that. Um, what can you say directly to the women who surround him? Um, first of all, I love you. I don't know if you hear it enough. I don't know you, but I was you and I love you. People can hate people so easily, like the way I've been hated by some of the people who surround him in this time, that I can love you just the same. Um, I urge you to support other women who come out with their story, um, because it's very hard to do so. And I know there's a lot of us that are still waiting to gain the courage or the bravery to tell their story, and I suggest that they do. Um, my door is always open if you ever need any information or you want any support um, on leaving him uh, or the community. Um, I was very lucky to have survivors on the outside to help me leave in January. Um, a few people actually. Um, so I want to provide the same service for anyone who'd like to escape now because you are escaping. Um, I'd like the women to also think um, about uh, Rachel and the babies um, because they're the ones who are suffering the most about this um, and as a woman um, you should really think about her position um, she didn't know a lot of stuff that was happening from my understanding um, she's really innocent in this she's an amazing person an amazing mother and I have nothing bad to say about her at all whatsoever um, she and I got very very close I was very close to that family and I love them a lot um, including those babies. Um, to any men who surround him at the moment, um, I need you to ask yourself why you want to follow and support someone, first of all, and just plainly with this kind of controversy and evidence against them. Um, it doesn't really make you look very good, and I really don't think you want your families to think of you in the types of ways that we're talking about this man, but I suggest that you get away from them as soon as possible. Um, I need you to think about how you'd feel if you found out an important woman in your life was being groomed and was groomed and signed a contract and was drawing symbols on themselves for some other fucking man and how you'd feel about that because that's really hard and my dad cried when I told him. <laughs> it might seem like nothing to you, but like, if this happened to somebody you love, it'd be a different story. He's not someone to look up to, and he's not a role model. Um, and I suggest that if you love and care for women and human beings, that anyone who's still associated with him silently and proudly back away. There's no need to threaten anybody. There's no need to harass anybody. There's no need to make anybody feel bad. He already knows what he's done. He knows he knows he'll listen to this he's seen everything here he knows what's going on and he still has said nothing um and also a lot of the people that he preys upon to get closest to him are very lonely um they find themselves in hard times that they might not have anyone to turn to so they turn to him he creates this community where people can turn to which makes everyone feel safe and it's amazing but he uses that safety in the community to keep people close to him um and to keep people believing that he's a good person when it's actually just his community that's a, that's good um everyone that i've seen in his community is amazing it's him that is not amazing um and he uses that to his full advantage uh to keep people around um how does victim shaming play a part in this um Victim shaming devalues the survivor. It, shame, it shames the survivor into more silence. Um, I was so scared to say anything because when I first had said something at the early early part of December, that backlash that I got just slightly and like having people know kind of what was going on and still not have them help me it was just really hard. Um, like I said, I don't blame anyone for it because everyone's scared. Um, but uh, it, he, he knew that that was going to keep me silent and keep others silent. 
Um, last but not least, what gave me the courage to tell this story? Honest to God, multiple attempts to tell my story and having them fail is why I wanted to tell this story. <laughs> I've tried so many times to, to have people listen to me. Um, and so to have a, an area that I could just like sit and talk like I did right now and just like view everything out was amazing. Um, I always say the universe works in mysterious ways and I always thought the, the, the universe would give me my right moment to tell the story and it's absolutely right now where we can all come together um, and we can all support each other and we can um, all collect things together and be a collective front because I think that's the only way that this is going to get stopped. And I also do this uh, for the survivors who haven't come out and told their story yet. Um, because I want to encourage them and tell them that, oh my God, it feels amazing. <laughs> it like literally feels amazing um, to just tell your truth. Um, and it's not a pressure on anyone to do that. You never have to tell your story if you don't want to, but I promise that if you do decide to tell your story, I will be right in the chat as well, supporting you, being there, holding your space. Um, and waiting for you to feel this moment of freedom too, because that's literally how I feel right now. Um, this man for the past over nine months has held some type of power over me. And by me telling the story, I have cut that cord and I couldn't be so much fucking happier than I am right now. Honest to God. Um, and then I also did this for the people who are still there, um, because you deserve to be loved and you deserve to be supported and you deserve to be in a community that'll listen to you and as much as he's been saying that we're some like brainwash hater hacking like god only knows what words he used um we're actually not at all we're just all the survivors of his bullshit and we've all just come together to love each other and listen to each other i'm not scared of anybody and i'm not scared of this man